This is Dr. Ada Agada of the Center for Leadership Ethics in Africa, University of Fort Hare. I'll be talking on the topic, why African philosophers should take ethnophilosophy seriously. In this talk, I will argue that ethnophilosophy supplies a unique cultural horizon within which African philosophy can thrive, and also show that it is necessary for African philosophers to seriously exploit ethno-philosophical resources in the construction of uni their unique philosophical systems in a way that make an original contribution to world philosophical heritage. But what is African philosophy? Over the past 70 years, African philosophy has established itself as a major world intellectual tradition. It seeks to answer questions about human nature and the universe from a uniquely African perspective. This African perspective privileges a complementaristic vision of the universe. This complementaristic vision has been described by a wide variety of African philosophers as rooted in African holistic ontology. This African holistic ontology regards the universe as a totality of spiritual, social, and physical components of reality. The term spiritual is used here not in any mysterious way, but simply to emphasize the consciousness dimension of reality. So African philosophers' exploitation of this unique holistic ontology, this holistic view of reality, enables them to make a unique contribution toward philosophy. Ethnophilosophy eminently exemplifies this holistic ontology. Now, what is ethnophilosophy itself? It can be broadly construed as an orientation in African philosophy that regards the unsystematized worldviews of traditional African society as philosophically valuable and viable. It is a species of cultural philosophy since it interrogates raw philosophical data and seeks to extract information of philosophical value in this data. Now, what are exa examples of ethnophilosophical resources includes mites, proverbs, African traditional religion, riddles, poems, dances, the worldviews of the various African ethnic groups, and the very structure of their languages with their ideas about human nature and the world embedded in the structure of these languages. All these have come together to constitute what we call ethnophilosophy. Uh, ethnophilosophy is indeed a controversial concept in African philosophy and has in various receptions towards it. One can identify three basic attitudes towards ethnophilosophy by African philosophers. Some have reacted with outright rejection. They have outright rejected ethnophilosophy as lacking in intellectual rigor, in philosophical rigor, as being collectivistic, that is, owned by ethnic groups and lacking the criticality that enables philosophy to attain a universal spread, a universal content. 
Pauline Hatanji her fellow travelers have been categorized as among the, the philosophers who have outright rejected Edo philosophy. There are also African philosophers who regard Edo, Edo philosophy with suspicion. Why they agree with the rejection is that Edo philosophy is lacking in critical value. They also disagree with the ethno with the rejection is since they believe that it may be philosophically useful to the extent that philosophers can build up on the assumptions of ethno philosophy and produce individual thought systems that have a universal application. A third reception of ethno philosophy involve accommodation. Philosophers who belong to the, this group believe that ethnophilosophy is a major source of African philosophy and that exploiting it can enable African philosophers not only to construct unique systems but to make an original contribution to world philosophy. Now, why should African philosophers take ethnophilosophy seriously? I noticed that there are philosophical traditions of the world. African philosophy, Western philosophy, Latino philosophy, Asian philosophy, and perhaps other philosophical traditions. What can make African philosophy different from these other traditions? Certainly, African philosophy cannot claim that it is Western philosophy or Asian philosophy. African philosophy lays claim to its distinctness precisely because it answers the fundamental questions of philosophy from a unique perspective. And this unique, unique perspective can only be adequately offered by ethnophilosophy. If African philosophers remove the ethnophilosophical background, we will no longer have African philosophy, but perhaps philosophy in Africa. And philosophy in Africa can be anything. It can be Western philosophy, it can be Asian philosophy, and it can be Latin philosophy. So without the unique ethnophilosophical background, which, eh, which highlights that African holistic ontology, the complementaristic vision of the world. Without this background, African philosophy is neither here nor there. If African philosophy is neither here nor there, then it cannot make any contribution to world philosophy. And being unable to make any contribution to world philosophy, it fits into the sunset into the sunset of irrelevance. For this reason, for this very fact that it is important for African philosophy to African philosophers to contribute uniquely and not parrot the talking point of Western philosophers, for this very reason, it is important that they, they take ethnophilosophy seriously. Without ethnophilosophy, the backgrounds, the unique background supplied by the cultural horizon that ethnophilosophy opens up for African philosophers. Our tradition, African philosophy, will lack identity. <laughs> there is also the intercultural dimension that makes an argument for African philosophers to take ethnophilosophy seriously. The century. The 21st century is one that celebrates difference. The cultural diversity of the world has been heightened by the phenomena of globalization and multiculturalism. The various cultures of the world are thus forced into close contacts, which brings out their similarities and their differences. The acknowledgement of difference 
has led the, the century to celebrate of diversity, has led the century to celebrate difference. So if African philosophy is going to be celebrated, it should also be distinct or different from Western philosophy. This difference will not be a negative uh, uh, phenomenon, but we serve to enrich the heritage, the philosophic heritage of the various cultures of the world. As these different cultures interact, as a century co co becomes more diverse, it is obvious that the advantages which Western philosophy now has over other philosophical traditions be gradually diminish. As a global south gains population advantage, also increasingly becomes economically viable, they will assert themselves. And this assertion of the global south we also reflect in the assertion, assertiveness of philosophers from the global south with Western philosophy losing its privileged status. The philosophy of the future will be essentially dialogical, intercultural, comparative. The philosophy of the future will invite philosophers of diverse cultures to the round table of intercultural philosophy, where they contribute to a new humanism that borrows from the various contributions of all the cultures of the world in the endeavor to expand the horizon of our common humanity. For African philosopher to play an active role, to have a loud voice at the third table of intercultural philosophy, the philosophy of the future, it must bring something unique. And it cannot offer anything unique to the world if it de-emphasizes or removes the ethno ethno-philosophical background, the ethno-philosophical factor that I am happy on in this talk. Now, there is a question that has sustained debates in among contemporary African philosophers. It is asked that can ethno-philosophy, can commitment to ethno-philosophy produce individual thought systems of philosophical ideas and concepts that are universal in the application or that can command respect among the world, my answer is yes. This has been demonstrated by a majority of African philosophers. Even philosophers that regard ethnophilosophy with suspicions, suspicion, like Kwesi we read to extensively dependent on the ethno-philosophical resources of his Akan group to construct philosophical systems, to articulate philosophical ideas that have been acknowledged worldwide as having a universalistic value. Philosophers of the conversational school of philosophy, which I have represent, philosophers in my own Center for Leadership Ethics in Africa, as so many other African philosophers have constructed systems, articulated philosophical ideas like consolationism, vitalism, exomeso logic, various ideas that are making an impact and enabling African philosophy to consolidate itself as a major world philosophical tradition of the 21st century. So the answer is yes. We only need to work harder to exploit the resources, the ideas that are already embedded in the structure of, of our, our African languages and construct philosophical systems that make a unique contribution to world philosophy. As we highlight the inputs, the contributions that a holistic ontological vision of the universe can con make and contribute. Ethnophilosophy is to African philosophy what ancient Greek philosophy is to Western philosophy. 
up to today, Western philosophers still find ethno still find Greek ancient Greek philosophy as a source of inspiration. They borrow ideas, philosophical ideas that are latent in ancient Greek philosophy, and then problematize them, raise them to a higher level of philosophical engagement. African philosophers can also regard ethno philosophy as a reserve of ideas, a bank of inspiration to which they can return. Find the philosophical energy and proceed to articulate philosophical systems that transcend ethno philosophy itself and make a significant contribution to world philosophy. The noted Western philosopher Alfred North Whitehead has famously stated that the whole of Western philosophy adds up to footnotes to Plato. This is obviously in recognition of the role that ancient Western philosophy has played in the progress of Western philosophy. If Western philosophers can acknowledge the bad debates, the old ethno the old ancient Greek philosophy, there's no reason why African philosophers should be ashamed of acknowledging the importance of ethno philosophy as a major source of African philosophy, which they can explore to make a unique contribution to world philosophical heritage. I dare say that African ethno philosophy, that future African philosophical productions we count as footnotes to ethno philosophy to the extent that the future work of African philosophers will go into the articulation, the philosophical fine tuning and perfection of intuitions and sentiments already embedded in the structure of African languages, in their proverbs, their wise sayings. Reduce a traditional vision of the world which ethno philosophy eminently exemplifies. Thank you for listening to my talk.